Hey there everyone, Lord Fidget here with the 27th episode of Aether Raids Offense. This time we have Astra Season. Astra Season has historically been a little shaky for me, but fortunately this was one of the good weeks. Uh, I actually got pretty hard carried by a new raiding party that I put together at the end of last Astra Season in response to my getting horribly destroyed. Uh, and this raiding party features New Year's Alphonse and Sharena. Uh, they actually put in so much work. Uh, I initially was stuck with a plus speed minus attack copy. I did some late pulls on the banner and ended up with a plus attack to merge them into. So they're now plus attack plus one, which is very nice. And they put in so much work, I'm very pleased. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's really it. Let's just go ahead and get right into these battles, shall we? So this is the first map up, and it's a bit of a combination of Space Oppression and Rally Trap. Uh, what I like in particular about this map is that it does a good job of protecting the uh, most important units, the cavalry in the upper left-hand corner, through the terrain, the structure placement, and just their sheer threat range, and really only exposes units who aren't particularly useful to the actual map's strategy like Duma. So, as you can probably tell, Reinhardt's range is the biggest on this map, covering, covering actually a very large portion of it. And if you were to stick somebody in Reinhardt's range, then what would happen is Elliewood would go to the space below Reinhardt, provide a rally, and get immediately refreshed by Rayson. And, if, and now Elliewood and Reinhardt's ranges overlap a, a lot, quite a lot. And Elliewood might be able to attack whatever unit you stuck in uh, Reinhardt's range initially possibly unleashing a Dragon Fang if your unit can counterattack, since he does get plus 14 speed between attack speed push 4 and Blazing Durandal. Uh, and then additionally, there's a restore element. Veronica is able to restore Reinhardt, negating any, negating any panics or debuffs he might accrue from uh, enemy structures or skills. So those, those two are the big, the big important units for this map. As far as options for approaching, this space right here, Elliwood will be not be able to hit that spot. If you were to take a probably, it would have, almost certainly have to be a very powerful green unit to be able to t survive both Reinhardt and Thersir. In a vantage tank would work since Elliwood's the one with hardy bearing. That's just something to keep in mind because that space, Elliwood can't actually get there because there's a mountain in his way. And in fact, if you do use, say, like a green tome, then uh, what will happen is Elliwood will probably end up rallying Rayson with his second action because Rayson is threatened, which means that Elliwood is stuck in place, leaving, giving you some more additional freedom on the, on the next player phase. Another option is you could just straight up tank him <laughs> if, you, if you have a unit that's capable of doing that. It would honestly probably need to be... Uh, it, 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 the unit would have need to have some pretty insane specs. Like, you need to avoid getting doubled by Elliwood so you don't nom the Dragon Fang, or I guess you could one-shot him, maybe. Uh, and then you'd have to also have enough uh, defense and res combined to survive the assault of Reinhardt and Elliwood. It's not a whole lot of enemies are capable of... or not a whole lot of units, sorry, are capable of pulling that off. But if you have one, then more power to you. Go for that. Um... Another thing you can do, actually, is if you can safely take out Veronica, that will disrupt the rally trap ever so slightly. Elliwood will prefer to rally from the space to the left of Reinhardt instead of the space below him, which decreases his range pretty dramatically. Of course, it's not exactly easy to get a unit to take out Veronica and then get them to safety, but if you can manage that, then that's another option for your approach. Uh, that being said, that ladder, that last option, that's the one I ended up using, so let's go ahead and just get right into that. So I actually lucked out pretty hard for this battle because this raiding party is actually perfectly suited to deal with this uh, rally trap in the top left corner. What I need to do, well, I mean, well, what I need to do first is actually maneuver my units so that they're not in a terrible starting position. But after that, what I need to do is uh, break the a bunch of structures on the left-hand side. I will be leaving the Aether Amphorae because I will be sticking Legendary Leif over in the corner down there. And then the, on the next player phase, I'll have him take out Veronica. So I believe I have it uh, timed such that Veronica won't have Miracle ready, despite the fact that she's restoring away up in the, <laughs> up in the upper left. So, yeah, that should, that should be fine, actually. As long as I get Leif to the corner on the next turn, then she should only have... She should have two charges on her, on her miracle once I, once, I, once I get the combat, first combat going. 
So I think I'm in pretty good shape to do that. Just need to get Azura out of the corner so I can get Leif in there. And I think a quick reposition from Leah ought to do the trick on that. Then Leif can just run in. And then refresh Leo to get him out of Reinhardt's range and prevent the Rally Trap from tripping the turn before I want it to. And that ought to do it. So, perfect, perfect. Uh, Veronica's going to have two charges on her Miracle, which means she won't have it when Leif attacks her. So, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Perfect 2HKO. Okay, well, I'm, I guess it's not a perfect 2HKO. A perfect 2HKO would be 224s. I'm happy it's not a perfect 2HKO because that would be really troublesome if Leif could only exactly 2HKO Veronica. I will now have Leif run away, which opens, which gives uh, me the opportunity to move Leo in here, get a refresh from Azura, and reposition Leif to complete and utter safety. Now, here's the fun thing. The AI tends to prefer safe spaces for, uh, for when they rally. So Leah, uh, Ellawood is now going to rally from the space to the left of Reinhardt because I uh, recently evicted Veronica from that location. Instead of going in front of Reinhardt, which would have caused him to uh, get refreshed and immediately destroy Leo. So fortunately for me, that is not the case. I am able to have Leo beat up Reinhardt and Ellawood should, oh, okay. Uh, hmm. I thought he was going to advance. I was wrong. He ended up rallying Rayson Friends, because Rayson was threatened by Leo. You. Fortunately for me, uh, Leo is in Wings of Mercy range here, which means that after I take out Ellawood with Leif, I will be able to warp Azura right up to uh, the space above, above Leo, and he can then take out both Rayson and Thysir. Actually, I suppose that I could have just used Smite on Naga, and Azura would have been able to uh, reach that space through just straight up moving. But I like it better this way, just it, in case I in case I want that Naga action for something else. I don't think I will, but you know, you never you never never can have too many actions. So let's go ahead and take out the Seer here, and then we'll have to see which way Duma goes. Actually, I'm not really sure. Um, let's get uh, let's get Naga's Divine Fang on Leif, just in case I need a quick uh, a quick kill on Duma, and provide a uh, attack buff as well. So Duma is oh, trending towards the left. That seems to me like he's going towards Azura, which is interesting. I wouldn't really have thought he, he would have, but okay, I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. So let's see, turn six. Yeah, I have time. I can definitely get these. I don't need to kill him right away. So I'm gonna just get, uh, get Azura to safety here. And then Leif, I think, can break the tactics room and just take out the Aether Fountain on the, on the next player phase. Friends, but I my, I think you. I'm going to need to have Altina take out Duma because Confused. Twin Blade, or her uh, Ragnell Allendyke combined with Divine Fang is a pretty potent combination that'll allow her to circumvent uh, the, the uh, Fell Breath effect. Wait, no, yes. is it Fell Breath? I think you it is Fell Breath. I think what it's called. Anyway, 239s will take him out. <laughs> Alrighty, this is the second map, and I'm sure it needs no introduction. It is what is known to most of the community as a cav line. Uh, a cav line is basically just a type of space oppression map that targets almost every single one of your unit's potential starting locations except for this one in an attempt to get you to lose a unit on the first enemy phase. Uh, I don't very often feature cab lines, but which is mostly because I don't very often run into them. In fact, this is only the second cab line I've encountered while actively doing this series. Uh, I do, I have run into them a couple times while I was on hiatus, uh, but really this is the second time, and it's the second time because the first time was literally like three days before this. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't get, I don't get these very often, so I left it the chance to include one here. As far as actually dealing with cav lines, there are a couple a couple things I can suggest. One is to keep some spaces open on your back line. I suggest at least two, three if you can manage it. I personally like having the panic manner where it is, so I just leave it there. And two is fine for most cases. Another thing that is really helpful for dealing with cav lines is to have multiple enemy phase combatants. Uh, I, for that reason, I feel... Uh, Cav lines are probably at least a little bit less effective during uh, Astra season than they are during Light season, purely because 
During Aster Season, players raiding parties may contain Altina, who is absolutely capable of dealing with a ranged cavalry unit that doesn't negate her counterattack. So yeah, having, having those will greatly assist you because you will be able to take out some uh, multiple of the cavalry enemies on your fir the first enemy phase, their initial rush, which leaves you with less to deal with later. Uh, in a similar vein, if you have a Null Sea Disrupt user, those would be especially useful if you were to place them in one of these two spaces here. Uh, those two spaces will get you at least four of the cavalry units, and quite possibly this unit, he whatever units in this space, depends on their movement range and attack range. So those are, I mean, really, that's that's all there is. All, I, th all there is to say about cav lines, so I'm going to go ahead and get into my personal approach here right now. Alright, I'm going to be sending in the Alphonse raiding party for this map. The idea here is that I have not one, not two, but three units who are capable of fighting competently at two range on the enemy face, those being Alphonse himself, Leo, and Altina. Uh, I think the best way to deal with this map, and probably most cav line maps if I'm being perfectly honest, is to take out as many of the cavalry units as you possibly can on the first enemy phase so you have less to worry about on the subsequent phases. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and pull back Naga, Altina, and Renea here because unfortunately there are three three uh, weapons here trust. that negate my counterattacks. So I'll this just way? pull them back and leave Leo and Alphonse to deal with the legendary lace. So let's see how this goes. Um, hmm. Ooh, two twenty ones. I mean, uh, <clears throat> two twenty ones exactly as I calculated. <laughs> okay, full disclosure here, I actually didn't run the numbers on this map, really, just because I knew that um, this was the only the only team that was even going to have a r remote chance of pulling out a victory here. So Alphonse took a lot of damage there, but Open the Future is going to help him recover that. And he is still below half HP, so Naga and Renea... Uh, but mo prime, but uh, most notably Naga is going to be, are going to be able to warp to him, uh, Naga in particular because she can just warp up and destroy that field, providing some extra space to work with. I'm really wondering here whether or not I should leave Altina in range of Lin. I don't think Lin can actually kill her with that reverse tone cavalry buff, and Elise has recover, not restore. So it's not like that's going to get converted to uh, whatever that would be. That would be a uh, 5157. Oh, yikes. It, it yeah, converted to plus, plus four more from Swift Sparrow for a total of 61 if she had restored, but she doesn't. Um, hmm, honestly, I don't like it. I, I really just don't like leaving my, my uh, units in range of enemies that they can't counterattack. It's just a, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's just a weird little quirk of mine. I'm gonna go ahead and pull uh, Altina and Leo back. And actually, this quote-unquote too safe play sometimes bites me because um, the enemies will move in such a way as to, to, to punish my inaction when I could have guaranteed that they were in a certain spot at a certain time. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's it, it's going to work out fine this time, just because uh, Alphonse is in position to take out both Elise and yes. Lin. But yeah, I don't know. I guess I just sometimes I just need to have a little more confidence in what I'm doing, and I've been I've been working on that. <laughs> we'll we'll see how it goes. So I can actually fall back here. Doom has got his armored boots. So I actually maybe I should try and take that away from him. Let's see. Oh, he has distant counter. And yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> Didn't realize he had distant counter. So much for being able to keep him down slightly. Uh, fortunately, Leo is still in Wings of Mercy range, which allows me to just kind of roam the map and then he can just uh, get refreshed by Renea or even maybe uh, get a smite from Naga to help him, help him move around. So that's interesting. Doom is actually going after Naga? I wasn't expecting that, really, but okay. So that's that's totally fine. It helps me predict exactly where he's going to go. And in this case, I think I'm just going to warp Naga up to where Leo is. Duma should come straight up. And that, uh, putting Naga next to Leo gives her the attack tactic bonus. So she should one-shot. Uh, I just need to reposition her onto this trap so it doesn't trip and it was fake anyway. And take the victory. 
And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Aether Raid's Offense. I know I had fun not getting completely destroyed like I did two seasons ago. And yeah, I was actually really surprised at how much work my uh, bonus unit Leo put in. I was actually kind of what, regretting not giving him a tri Raven Adept build a few times this season, as he, he mostly dealt with colorless and blue enemies, really. So that would have been a really good, neat build to have, I think. But oh well, something for next time. In fact, I may actually just end up switching his blessing and using him again next season during Light Week, just because the rest of the lineup isn't really that stellar looking to me. I think he might actually just be my best choice here. Well, we'll see how it turns out. I, I, I really do think I am going to do it, though. And regardless, I will see you at the end of next week for another Light Season video. And until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.